All right, so picking up where the last video left off, we need to talk about gods in One Piece, or more specifically, the potential gods in One Piece, establishing what we have already seen, and then also establishing something that makes sense to see in the future, and trying to connect the dots in between. This video will be referencing the latest manga chapter, 1045, so if you aren't caught up, save this video for when you are caught up. So if you're new to my channel, the way I view the world is by making connections. So let me connect you to my vision, the par vision. Continuing where the last video left off, I want to talk about gods and interesting powers that we have already seen. So a good place to start off with that is again the premise of Luffy's sun god Nika Fruit. It's a Zoan fruit, and as the Gorose told us, Zoan fruits possess a will of their own. This being said, I speculate that's where smile fruits primarily failed in. They contain the lineage factors, but probably not a proper willpower. But we'll talk about how the various scientific endeavors in One Piece may connect back to Luffy's sun god fruit in a different video. Another point to focus on is how Luffy's fruit had a few indicators that it wasn't a normal paramecia in the first place, and using those same clues to pinpoint other similar patterns in other fruits. In this line of thinking, I want to put out probably the goofiest, but like low-key probably one of the best candidates for another fruit that's probably something else. We already talked about Robin and Moria and Blackbeard, which we'll get to them later, but if we are talking about a Zoan fruit being masqueraded as something else, there is one character that I've been talking about in the last month when I talked to Hidden Island, BDA, Artur, Joy Boy Theories, that One Piece talk. If you don't know yet, it's Caribou. Yes, Caribou. This guy. Alright, I know you think I'm crazy, but like think about it. Why is a random character like Caribou still so relevant? He was the first, quote, Logia introduced to us in the time skip. He was on Sabaori, then Fishman Island, then mentioned a few times while we were in Dressrosa, and then again throughout Wano. And not even just like mentioned in Wano, he is a huge reason for Luffy to even get to Onigashima and recover. Caribou also has an open-ended plotline where after discovering the identity of Poseidon, he mentioned that he thinks it would be valuable information for someone, and we still don't know who that someone is, which makes less sense because it doesn't feel like it's the world government or navy. Like, it would be so out of pocket if he was a part of S.W.O.R.D. for example. And then we've seen Big Mom and Kaido already, Doflamingo as well, and he hasn't had connections with them. And it could be Shanks, but Shanks probably already knows about Shirahoshi given Roger's crew was told about her before she was born. So that technically leaves Blackbeard, but we're still not really sure. It would be interesting if it were Dragon, but I really doubt it considering the, you know, caribou is kidnapping women part. And then I'm sure Robin would have been made aware of a revolutionary army spy like Caribou. But anyways, why Caribou? Okay, well, he has ringed eyes. Is that not enough to convince you that there's something special about him? No, not enough? Okay, how about this? This is what I've been telling everyone. On chapter 1021, the same chapter, by the way, where Robin demonstrates her possible Zoan demon form, we catch Caribou saying, My swamp swamp power is bottomless. She's a hungry gal. Now, Artur, the Library of Ohara, corrected this and said rather than a gendered phrase, it would be more accurate to say Caribou said that my swamp swamp power is like somebody with a bottomless stomach. That's not a direct quote, that's what I remembered at least. Okay, so there's two points that I want to make here. I genuinely think it'd be extremely valuable to go through and look at every speech bubble Caribou has had, especially in Wano, because it, to me, it's like Oda included this character for some added value, either it's his speech or it's his power, or it's both. But for this video, let's focus on his powers, and just getting back to the point that Caribou actually, and correct me if I'm wrong, I think this is the first time, especially for a Logia, to refer to their devil fruit powers as a somebody or an entity. And now we know, according to the Gorosei, that Zoans definitely contain a will of their own. 
You know what's crazy about caribou? According to not one, not two, but three observation hockey users, caribou is sensed as a wild animal. In chapter 650, when caribou is lurking and about to kidnap Shirahoshi, Luffy asks Sanji and Zoro if there are any wild beasts around the palace. This was in reference to caribou. And not to derail the conversation, but this reminded me of when Luffy and Zoro sensed something else within Blackbeard. But yeah, what if the monster trio were actually sensing the wild beast within Caribou and his fruit power wasn't the Swamp Swamp Logia, but rather a mythical Zoan that also has Logia properties, which I want to remind you already exists. Marco is a mythical Zoan with Logia properties, and it wouldn't be crazy to think that there might be two of them. Because first of all, Logias are supposed to be powers that grant you full control over natural elements. I'm not saying swamps are not naturally occurring, but a swamp is a very obscure element, especially in comparison to all of the other canon Logias. The other one that has an inconsistency would be Blackbeard's fruit, as we talked about before. And I have my personal gripe with smoker's fruit because smoke is a weird occurrence and it's not exactly an element and it's more like a derivative but i'll save that talk for another day back to caribou the way his bottomless swamp power works reminds me more of quicksand but it can't be because crocodile has the sand power and at the end of the day isn't swamp just watery soil and largely an environmental production of a forest like, first of all, when Caribou uses his power, does it even remind you of a swamp? It honestly looks more like rubber or how resin would be if that were still a fruit. When I think of a swamp, I think like murky waters that crocodiles and river monsters swim in. So the way they display Caribou's power is more like mud. But again, mud is just a weird thing. Wouldn't it be more accurate to just make him a dirt or soil or earth logia? And then on top of that, they added a weird utility to his logia that no other logia has. Where not only can he not let things phase through him like Blackbeard, he has to absorb the hits. But on top of that, his mud randomly has infinite storage within him. Given that his powers are instead of one element, it's like two elements forced together, and all of the other details, it sounds to me that he probably might be a mythical Zoan that is similar to Marco. Which would be crazy, but like water and earth, you know, we should go back to that Skypea panel and address something because if Luffy is a sun god, and along with that was mentioned the god of rain, the god of the forest, and god of the earth, could caribou's fruit be one of these god fruits? Maybe the earth one or forest one? But here's my two cents on this scene. The main thing here is that all of these god titles actually aren't referring to separate entities. The ancient Shandorans were referring to the Kashigami, this giant snake as all of those gods. And a quick shout out to Oda for this shrine where a lot of people are saying this is gear 4th foreshadow, but when you look at it, doesn't that just look like Jinbei? Again, tying back to a previous theory that I had about gods, and I'll get back to that in a second actually because it's super relevant. But so back to this point, so while four gods are mentioned, they are referring to one entity here. The larger context of this scene is that the Kashigami wasn't a real god, but from Oda's narrative perspective, I think it's really interesting because Kashigami is a really specific name. In Japanese, it would translate to oak god, so god of a tree. And we all know how important trees are to our community. At a certain point, it felt like Oda wanted us all to become botanists like Nolan. But so Oak God was interesting. That could indicate that Kashigami was a god of one specific thing rather than all of them. Or maybe there's a god of trees. And going back to what I talked about in my last video, there's only one fruit really that relates to flowers, and that's Robin's Hanahana no Mi. Which interestingly, in Dressrosa had this really interesting tree panel. And now to sort of switch gears, there was a god of rain. There's two candidates for that or maybe three, or actually four? Let's put some of them out there to get them out of the way. Dragon, I don't think so because Oda emphasized wind for him, but whenever he is serious, there is rain. Then another one to not exactly toss out, but it would make sense would be Fishman. Jimbei has said that groups of fishmen together could have the power to create maelstroms, and we've seen how powerful Jimbei has been, so maybe there was a fishman in the past with enough power to do it all on his own. 
But here is where we get to some interesting candidates. Zunisha could be something interesting. He has the tie-in to the mythical Zoans with the ringed eyes, but also he is related to Joy Boy and Sun God Nika, and he quite literally makes it rain over Zo every day. Then the last candidate, which could make sense for a lot of reasons, is Vivi, the person who commanded rain. It was such a small scene, but really important. I will mention this again in my Conqueror's Hockey video and Ancient Weapons video, but I'll leak it here. I think there is grounds to claim that Vivi might be the Ancient Weapon Uranus. I'll explain that in details in the future, but I think it makes sense to at least consider this. The other reason to think this is because of Eam, actually. There were four pictures that Eam had, Luffy, Shirahoshi, Blackbeard, and Vivi. So if we know that Luffy is Sun God Nika, and we know Shirahoshi is the Ancient Weapon Poseidon, then that almost makes you assume the other two might follow suit here. If Vivi if were a god of the rain and an ancient weapon, then that would leave Blackbeard to be or possess the last ancient weapon somehow, which would be Pluton. But also if we talk about fours, in Skypiea four gods were mentioned, and if somehow Shirahoshi was the god of the forest, then that would leave Blackbeard to be god of the earth. And I'm not sure to be honest, but now that Luffy is confirmed to be sun god Nika through his devil fruit, you can't help but now look at these four with even greater interest. On top of all of that, Alabasta is still relevant. There's the open plotline left with Garp when he said there's a major incident involving Alabasta Basta and Vivi right now. I have way more to say about devil fruits and ancient weapons and their ties to Greece actually, but that will be talked about in the future. One thing that I do want to talk about is another context of gods, and I will elaborate on Luffy's side of it in the Sun God Nika power video, but to point out, Sun God Nika is an in One Piece world god. Not that Nika has no real world references, it's just that unlike Sengoku's Buddha fruit, Nika isn't exactly a recognized god in our world. But in One Piece, there are other entities titled as gods, and I want to go through some of them. I mean, we have the likes of Anel, who is also kind of suspect to me given his specific will that he had, and also the end fight form that he had with Amaro and a few other reasons. It would also be cool since the Skypiea fight would have been a fight between two actual gods, Nika and Amaru. That being said, there's also the celestial dragons who seem to claim themselves as gods and or at least the descendants of the creators of the world or gods. This is interesting for so many reasons because it's clear to us at least that they definitely weren't descendants of Nika, right? So that alone kind of insinuates that there is a counter god, and this idea doesn't have to be connected to the celestial dragons, but it also makes sense to include them in this context. But okay, now that we have a mythical human Zoan model sun god Nika fruit, I think there might also at least be a mythical Zoan human human fruit model earth god Vars. Do you guys remember Vars? Vars or Verth, depending on the translations, was the worship deity that the Skypeans recognized for giving them land. If not a devil fruit, the person might still exist. This is where things get a little complicated though. When I looked at the Vars statue the first time, I thought maybe a fishman like Jinbei or maybe an Oni or an ancient giant. Races we still have to kind of learn about. But what if Vars was the god that was the originator of the celestial dragons? If that's the case, that would make Eam Vars possibly? Or maybe Eam is searching for Vars? And if Vars gave land, well we know of one Logia that is water and earth. So is Caribou actually Vars? That would be crazy, right? There's so many thoughts around this to be honest, but another important line of thinking is that the Celestial Dragons kicked out the original gods that existed on the red line that Marco remembered drunk Whitebeard talking about. The way those gods were talked about and then it leading to King's reveal, it almost makes it seem like the Lunarians were the original gods that existed on top of the red line before the Celestial Dragons, Queen referencing them as super adaptable monsters in a way that could survive any hell. A key indicator of Lunarians besides the black wings is white hair so far and flame control, especially on the head. You know who kind of resembles a Lunarian right now? 
Luffy, Sun God Nika might just be a Lunarian lineage factor from the strongest Lunarian. Lunarians were a race that were wiped out, and is it coincidental that there was an ancient kingdom that was also wiped out during the Void Century, and thereafter Celestial Dragons took their claim to the Lunarian lands and then dominated the world thereafter? I have so many things to talk about and connect to in regards to Luffy's power as Sun God Nika, and especially with the white coloring. For those that are upset by it, I just want to point out that our sun is actually white. It's not orange or yellow. That's our perspective of it from the earth. But the true color, because of the light spectrum, it ends up being a white light. But just to go back, I thought the Lunarian angle was really interesting, where if Sun God Nika were a Lunarian, then it would fit that they were actually gods. And there's more connections to this besides just white hair and flame control. Their rubbery bodies? King could randomly flick his head into Zoro, kind of like Luffy's headbutt. But that's not to say that King should also be able to access Sun God Nika's powers. It's more likely that Sun God Nika as a person probably had a high level of willpower or hockey too. But so again, if Sun God Nika were Lunarian, then wouldn't it make sense that the other gods were also of other races? God of the forest could be Minx, God of Rain could be Fishman. God of the Earth could be giants or whatever Vars is, and we know that Sword God Ryuma existed, and this is just a meme, but it would be hilarious if Law's Fruit was actually Sword God Ryuma. Probably not, but I brought up Sword God Ryuma because we know that swordsmen have a different path towards passing down their wills, and that was through swords. So maybe all the other gods did the same in various ways, one of the most likely ways being Devil Fruits. And if lineage factors are a huge driver of anything in One Piece, then we know the most natural way to pass lineage factors is just by having kids. And we know that Poseidon's power was hereditary. So maybe that's just another way a god passed on their powers. All of this talk about gods and I'm still not all the way through it. It's crazy to think though a show about a rubbery boy would somehow transition to this level where it was kind of expected. The celestial dragons are supposed to represent godhood and all the scientists are jumping into the realm of gods. Then it makes sense that our main characters, not just Luffy, will be also jumping into the realm of godhood. An interesting point that I want to leave off on is that in One Piece, it was said that Judge and Vegapunk were ending entering the realm of gods with their research, so it makes sense, as I mentioned with my Sanji series, that there would be some connection to gods with Sanji. But also, Vegapunk's most apparent failure creation is literally a devil fruit. So if entering the realm of gods results in devil fruits, then it's probably the case that yeah, these gods that we're, we're searching for are the sources of the devil fruits, and maybe it is the tree god we spoke about earlier. We still have yet to talk about two very important Paramecia users, Sugar and Big Mom. Sugar being the most interesting because she is another outlier power user where her permanent state is eternal youth. And to me, that sounds like a godlike ability. I want to put this out there also, but amongst the worst generation, the two characters left to be introduced is Yerouge and Bonnie. Their powers are still so mysterious, and I wonder if it's because we wouldn't have understood them until now now with these mythical Zoan powers and godlike powers. Hopefully all of this sparked your brains. I can't wait to get out more videos and more streams. If you want to support, make sure to check out my merch and I will be updating the store soon. I got a huge surprise coming through on my stream soon, so make sure you follow or subscribe wherever and become a visionary in the community. And so like always, thank you for connecting with me and I'm looking forward to connecting with you all on the next part vision. <laughs>